Okay, so from what I can tell, everybody did a great job with the GPS units. I don't think anybody's was set in demo. Um, thank you, Derek. That was a huge piece of information that I didn't have, that once you say no, you don't want to keep searching for satellites. It just reverts back to demo mode. So um, I will change the lab for next year so that they don't do that part until they're outside. <laughs> so anyway, a um, couple things to note. I, ha I have a folder up here in case you haven't noticed that, somewhere up here. Up here. Um, you can see my... Uh, there you go. And I've been putting in examples of, of labs. So um, especially in the township range and section lab that you guys did, uh, there were some common issues that people had. Um, and so um, pretty much everybody got all the points unless there was like an egregious error or they didn't finish it. And so it doesn't mean that you got it 100% correct. It meant like I'm just, yeah, that was hard. There's some things you wouldn't have known how to do yet. And so you got the points, but check this out, all right? So I put some notes in there. And then um, I put in a couple little videos um, or not. Or maybe I didn't. Maybe that's the wrong one. Where did it go? There it is. I have to label these like 0, 1, 0, 2 to get them to open up. Um, there we go. Okay, so one of the things that um, I see a lot of people still doing is because ArcGIS gives you lat long reversed, gives you long lat and you have to enter long lat, then people are recording those coordinates incorrectly on their documents. So we will always put latitude first and then longitude when you're, when you're telling me the location of something, okay? Um, the other thing is you don't put lat this north, long this south, okay? It's just the numbers, the coordinates themselves. You don't have to identify which is lat and long because they should be absolutely in the correct order, okay? Um, let's see. The other thing is some people had trouble with the um, donation land claim, especially that when they added that data layer, um, what happened was the data defaulted to some kind of value instead of just the feature outline, and so you got circles or you got shaded colors for each donation land claim. So when the program is looking for data values, it's going to say, oh, they have numbers from 1 to 50, and so I'm going to um, divide these up into six groups, and I'm going to uh, color their donation land claims with the highest numbers. So they're thinking that donation land claim number may be like a dollar value or an area value. So um, there, this little first uh, five-minute video just shows you how to make sure that you're setting your feature and not that you're setting a value. Okay, There's times when we're going to have to set a value because we want to actually map difference in uh, maybe land use or difference in land value. But for this, we were just trying to map the, um, the, the area itself. The second thing, I, a couple people had section numbers that were in the thousands, like section 5,000, 5,080, 197. So I know. So your section numbers should only be 1 to 36. So what that meant is when they labeled them, they picked the wrong field. They probably picked the area field or they picked the, the FID field instead of the, the name of the DLC number, okay? So, and, so that little lab video shows you how to do that. Did you have a question, yeah, Brian? Yeah, well, because I noticed that the FID or the F, F whatever thing was. Was the default. Was yeah, yeah. And so um, usually if there's a word name as a field name, it knows to look for that, right? And it's saying, oh, there's a name, so I'm going to default to that as my, as my label. But that may not be what you want to label things either. Um, so, yeah, in general, people did a great job. So if um, make sure your answers agree with these, okay? Um, and I just grabbed these from someone who I thought did a great job, and so you may, you may want to um, argue this point. And then um, there's an example of um, a map how yours should look, just some, some ideas. Um, La, la, la. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Okay. Okay. So, and I told you to turn all this stuff off. So if yours doesn't look like this, that is great. 
Um, ooh, okay, that was the one from the server. Um, a couple things to think about. Because you're really looking at layers of data, often your points and your lines need to go at the top of the list because you could have polygons that aren't transparent and they would cover up those points and lines and you wouldn't be able to see them on your map. So being able to set the order of your legend is really important. Um, the other thing, oh, I didn't do this on, on these, but this person labeled those uh, map notes so that you knew which one was nine, which one was question five. And you could also go in, when you're in your editing mode, you can go into edit and you could actually put what the township range and section would be for those. So um, just take a look at this, kind of compare your work to this one, compare your work here, and just make sure that, uh, that you've got it. Um, and so I've been doing that with other examples um, of, of really nice answers or, or maps that work well. So here's, you know, after we're done the lab, you can take a look and compare yours and see how you're doing. Um, let's see. So, what am I getting? Oh, so James found this amazing program. No, no, I'm going to go to um, this first, okay? DNR GPS is a really valuable little program for lots of reasons. One is, if I don't have a GPS unit, but somebody sends me a KML, but I want to make it a shape file or I wanted a text file for some reason, I can use DNR GPS as my converter. So I have a, a KML here of Zumwalt Park, which is a great open dog park here. Have you been there? Oh, I love that place. And so I can load anything. I can load this KML. So I'm going to go here and say uh, load the KML file, and it's on my desktop. Yes, it is. Um, and I can't see it. How crazy is that? Desktop. I see it right here. Oh, because I saved it as a KMZ. Ah. Where? Really? Okay, star dot star is just a wild card. I don't think it'll open it, but we can try. Okay. Oh, cool. I did not know this. I'm going to try this and see if it'll open that. Uh, nah. I can't find it. But, um, so if I had saved this as a KML, so let me just try this real quick. I'm going to just put that down there. I'm going to call it. KML. Okay, I don't know where it went. Do we know where it went? It probably went out in space somewhere. Okay, I'm going to do another one. Uh, oh, I know. Why won't this go anywhere? Okay, hold on. Here we go. Hello? There it is. Okay. KML2. So I've got KML2 here. Um, and save place as, and I let it take the default KML. So let's see if that was the problem. Um, all right, so now I'm going to file, load from file, um, desktop. Yay, there it is. So it has to be a KML. And, and there's my point. Um, so, so I've got that, and now I can save that to a shape file or whatever I need or a text file if I want to get that, that Excel table out. So this is a really uh, nice little program for, for conservation or moving data back and forth. Um, James had a, a program that he uses called, you guys know James back in the corner over there? Okay, where did it go? <gasps> no, no, did I lose it? Okay, what's it called? Map? Measure map. And he uses this on a tablet. Um, measure map, where was I? Oh, I hate Yahoo. Seriously. Thank you. Okay, now 
now. Where did it go? It's this one right here. Okay. So it's a free program. Um, 